This is going to be part of a series of videos that I'm going to make on controlling a model train and using automation. Looking at both the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino um, on how we can use those to uh, drive our train and put a bit of uh, simple automation into that. So although this is based on model trains, this Parts of this will be just as applicable to other DC motors, um, such as uh, uh, computer-based robots or, or using your Arduino to control a robot as well. Um, particularly at the, the end of this uh, will be a finished product that can be used to uh, control a train round a track, uh, using it on my um, indoor and outdoor layouts. Uh, so it work with double O and HO and G scale and it will also work on, on other um, types of train as long as they use a DC supply. And it will provide um, automatic um, slowing down of the train as it approaches the station, stopping at the station, waiting a while for passengers to get on and off and then for the train to accelerate away and continue around the track. So in this part of the video I'm going to look at the um, electrical power supply and looking at um, basically how the um, power supply that often comes with model trains is an AC adapter that plugs into your mains and then how the controller will look at converting that into DC which is needed for the uh, for controlling the DC motor. The controller also has other functions. It can change the direction, um, which we'll cover in the next video on, uh, on, on how we can use a H-bridge to replace the, the physical manual switch that is usually included on a controller. And then in a future video, we'll look at replacing the speed control with pulse width modulation which is used to provide an analog varying voltage from a DC output on the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi or using a digital PWM output on an Arduino or the microcontroller. So as you can see the uh, Transformer, the plug-in transformer here, it, it says transformer as opposed to uh, power supply. That's because other, many of the power supplies that you get that are plugged in um, include conversion to DC and perhaps uh, voltage regulation. And they're used so that you can plug them straight into things like phones or uh, other um, DC equipment. And historically, model trays took a different approach and they, they block that was in the, the plug-in module is literally just a transformer. So it's used to step the voltage down, um, it's really useful. The, the mains electrical supply um, coming into your house is, uh, depending on your country, uh, it, it's a voltage between about 100 and 240 volts. And it's a alternating current, which means the current comes backwards and forwards. So is a waveform that demonstrates this and if you look at the the top line of this it's, it's actually a sine wave and as the peak moves up towards the top that is a positive um, voltage and as it moves down below that center line it's a negative voltage really useful in electrical transmission um, because it means it's very easy to step that up and down using a transformer for um, efficiency reasons, but I say you can power, run electrical power at high voltage and reduce the amount of wasted energy. So the transformer in the plug um, acts in the same way, it takes your um, main supply, in this case it's a 230 volt 50 hertz UK supply, and it's going to drop that down this particular example 16 volts um, and many of them go up as high as 19 volts typically for model railway um, transformers. 
And then this goes into your controller. Now, the first thing your controller has to do is convert that to DC. Um, if you try to put an AC current onto a motor, it will try to move it, drive it forward for the first part of the cycle and backwards for the second part of the cycle. And basically the motor wouldn't move. So um, this is done by using what's known as a, a bridge rectifier. And um, this is a configuration of four diodes, um, which you can see here. And these um, allow the current to flow um, through two pairs of diodes for each half of the cycle. So during this first stage, um, diodes one and three turn on, the other two are, are reverse bias, and the current goes through one, through the load, and then back through three. Now, as the uh, signal, uh, the, the voltage goes negative, then it flips around. Those two become reverse bias, and the current can now flow through diode two and go back through diode four. And as you can see, the current can flow around the circuit. And this means that you'll have, the, the voltage will always be um, positive in relation to, to the output. So we, we don't have that negative um, supply. Looking back at the waveform, so this second waveform um, shows that it's, it's basically a, a a load of peaks now um, as the voltage goes high and low. Um, now, depends upon the train how um, this probably would actually work, but generally you also want to be able to use this for, for controlling something else as well, in which case you probably need a, a more stable supply. And just by putting a, a capacitor over the supply will help smooth that as shown in the third diagram. So what's happening here is that the capacitor will charge up when it's on it, um, when the voltage re is, is, is increasing and then as it decreases the capacitor will be a higher voltage and so it'll start to discharge slowly from the capacitor. And you can see like small peaks and troughs but um, compared to the incoming supply this is uh, very much a lot smoother. Now if you want to use that as um, a controller um, for a um, for say powering your um, Raspberry Pi or Arduino and first you're going to have to drop that voltage um, somewhat but also you would want a more stable supply so you would need to uh, put some um, perhaps a, a voltage regulator on there or something like that but essentially that is um, easily smooth enough for us to be able to just put that now onto the DC track and that would uh, power the train around. So as you can see you can make it from four individual diodes and that's not too bad but um, an alternative is just to buy a uh, bridge rectifier um, sometimes known as a full wave rectifier as a single um, component and this one has two legs for the um, alternating current in and two for the direct current out, the, the positive and negative. Um, it's just basically those four diodes enclosed into a single package. And this particular one is uh, slightly higher, higher power than the, uh, the diodes, um, the, the commonly available uh, rectifying diodes are typically around one amp, whereas this will uh, provide two amp. Um, both should be enough for an internal railway if you're just controlling a single track, but if you are looking at controlling a um, outdoor railway then you might need the uh, uh, slightly higher current. Um, this is for a analog railway. Um, obviously DCC um, is a completely different beast. You'd still have the same starting point um, but the control of, of DCC is uh, a bit beyond this. So we're just going to look at, at analog uh, supplies at the moment. So that's, uh, that's covered the first phase which is converting to um, DC and in the next video 
a look at how you can use a H-bridge to change the direction of the train. So I hope you found that useful. Um, if you click on subscribe and the notification bell, you'll find out when my next video comes out on uh, controlling model trains using a controller, a microprocessor.